When we're talking about um, the idea of hearing his voice, um, I had a thought the other day. Um, many of you may have seen the TV show called The Voice. And I was thinking about just the, the little bit I've seen it where the judges have their backs to the contestants. Somebody's out there singing. And, and so when they make a decision, they hear a voice that connects with them. And they think, oh, this is a, a voice I want to work with. And they, they turn the chair around. They hit a button and their chair turns around. And um, I don't know much more about how it all works other than that. But, but I just was thinking that's the way that we should be with hearing his voice so that we might, uh, you know, symbolically we got our attention on things going on in life and responsibilities and work and family, but we should be attentive to his voice. So when we hear that voice that we sort of hit the button and turn around and listen and, and pay attention to what he's saying to us or what he wants to say to us. And, and um, you know, we uh, talk about when we're discovering the will of God for our life, we talk about God's general will for our life and then God's specific will for our life. And I, I compare that with his voice. And as you heard us say in, in some of our panel discussion, you know, we, we know some general things like God loves us and, and that he has something good for us in life. And, and um, but often we want to hear a more specific word about what do I do about this situation or what's your leading with to me and I'm going to talk about that for a little bit but I wanted to say that um, if we're not that receptive or we don't invest some of ourself in hearing and learning his general voice it's harder for us to hear his specific voice and we we get that general voice from the teaching of his word, and, and we'll talk about that. But uh, today, I want to give you several scriptures. And so, uh, you know, it, it might feel like a lot to you, but this is such an important thing. I want to ask you to write these verses down. And so when you see them up on the screen, you know, you, you know start with the, the uh, name of the book and the number to get it down there. And, and you can either put it in your phone or write it down somewhere or something so that later you can look at it and, and reflect on it. And so um, how can we hear his voice more clearly? And the first thing I want to say to you is ask him to speak to you and expect to hear his voice. You know, we're invited by him to, to uh, ask him. We're invited by him and he tells us he wants to speak to us. And, and so often it's easy for us to first ask a friend or first ask somebody that we respect. But um, that's fine. We need that in our life. But think, hey, I'm going to ask God and God will speak to me. And uh, in Luke 11, verse 9 and 10, Jesus said, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And uh, this is talking about prayer and our communication with God. And, and that word where he, it says, ask and knock and seek, it's a, a more accurate translation of the word is ask and keep on asking and seek and keep on seeking and knock and keep on knocking. And if you think about it, each verb has a greater intensity. You're asking, then you're seeking and looking and pursuing, and then you're knocking. Like, I, I want to hear. And um, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. You know, God spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33, 3, and he said to him specifically, call on me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. And that is a verse that we can apply to our own life because God wants us to call out to him, ask him, and he will show us, he will speak to us. And it, there's nothing more significant than hearing that quiet whisper of God it's one of the most extraordinary benefits and privileges of the Christian life. And it, it can transform you and the circumstances that we're facing in. Isaiah 30 and verse 21 says, Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. 
And so he's talking about how he will guide us through different situations and, and um, you know, we will hear from him if he will listen. And, um, you know, um, uh, God's voice leads us uh, step by step. And God's voice leads us by calling us out on the water. I'll explain that, what that means. And his voice leads us in battle. And what I mean by this is his voice leads us often step by step is because sometimes we want the, the big picture, the long view, what, what's going to happen in the next five years. And, and uh, often God leads us a, a season at a time or a step at a time. He, he gives us direction for this moment in our life. And we have to love that. Just love it that he's going to tell us what to do because there's a, there's a trust involved. And, um, you know, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Which basically means don't put your focus, first of all, on figuring everything out. But put your focus, first of all, on trusting him. And then, uh, then in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. There's a footnote that tells us another way that this same phrase is translated he will make your path straight is he will direct your paths. And so it's trusting him and uh, following him, obeying him, and knowing that he will guide our steps. And I found sometimes that in the most difficult times of life that God gives me direction for the short, uh, short time. You know, what to do today, what to do this week. Because when, when you're hurting and struggling, maybe it's because of the complexity of things or maybe I'm asking questions that I don't need to know. You know, why did this happen and why did they do that or why is this going on? And that may not even be the right question. The right question might like, now that that's happened, what should I do? But he, uh, I often feel like when we go through something that's emotional, then that's the time I tell people, don't make any big decisions because the emotions are too loud and they're too confusing. And um, so um, I think I've seen people go through difficult times and then instead of drawing close to God during those difficult times, they begin to retreat. And I, I think sometimes that's because in the times of everyday living, we haven't learned to trust him or we haven't learned to hear his voice. And so during the emotional times, it's harder than ever. But it's a great thing if we learn that in those moments that we run to him. And even if, it, if he's saying, listen, I know this is painful, but trust me, you're going to make it. If you hear that from heaven, is that okay? Isn't that, that's reassuring for the moment. And when you're grateful for that, you embrace that. He will lead you step by step, day by day, and it gives strength to our life. And... Um, you know, I think even sometimes when he has a big task for us, he tells us a small amount. You know, Jesus used to tell his disciples, go here and I'll meet you there. Or, or go pray for the bread and fish and hand them out. And, and sort of, well, how's that going to help? And just trust me, it'll work. And, uh, you know, we, we started Oasis Church 32 years ago. And um, God told me a little bit about what we were to do. In fact, I've often said, if, if God told me what we were going to have to do, the price we were going to have to pay to get where we are now, I probably would have said no. I was just like, no, that, that can't be God. That's, that's wrong. He tells us what we need to know for now. And as we follow him, we get strong enough. We're developed. We are able to understand more clearly. So his voice leads us step by step. His, lead, his voice leads us to step out on the water. And what I mean by that is like when Peter was with the, in the boat with the disciples and Jesus was walking on water in a storm and they were, they were afraid and Jesus said, fear not, it's me. And so Peter goes, well, tell me to come out on the water. And so he said, come. And sometimes... Jesus will ask us to step out symbolically on the water. It's taking a risk. And this is how I define risk. This is important. He often will lead us to do things that are uncomfortable or unfamiliar. So don't take the word risk and make it crazy or illegal or immoral or, you know, it's like 
yeah, he's going to call us out on the water to take a risk, but it's to something that might be uncomfortable or unfamiliar to us. And we trust him and we take that step. We, we get stronger. And then his voice uh, speaks to us in battle. And that's the time when we need to hear, like we were saying before, in those hard times. And, and I think about um, David and Goliath. And when David came to fight Goliath, what had happened was that, uh, see, what had happened was that he went to the battle to bring food to his brothers who were trained soldiers. But all the soldiers were afraid to fight. And they were like, we're waiting here because we don't know what to do. And David's thinking about the songs he would sing to God. He was thinking about what he had learned by hearing the scripture taught to him. And, and um, so he responded to the voice that was in the inside of him, not the voice on the outside from the, from the giant. And uh, so it says in 1 Samuel 17, 45, 46, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and I will cut off your head. Basically, David's saying, Goliath, this is not going to be a good day for you. But he's saying, oh, you're coming to me with these threats that scare people. But you know what? I have a God that's bigger than you. And he's got a covenant and a promise with his people. And I'm coming to you in his word. You know, I'm coming in his name. So his voice is speaking to David. And David is speaking his voice out. His voice will be with you in battle. That's why it's important for us to know. So the first thing I said is to ask and expect. Secondly, to tune in to God's frequency. You know, there's a, a commercial that used to be on the air a lot of, with a cell phone company, and they would go to different places. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And they're just trying to say how great their coverage is, and you can hear it everywhere. And, um, but, um, you know, I think uh, God is saying that to that, can you hear me? And we have to get into his frequency, and sometimes we are filling our life with, with all the noise that life offers, and we can't hear from him. He's speaking. He's saying, can you hear me now? But we're out of range of the frequency. So we have to tune ourselves into that frequency that is really the only thing that will satisfy our soul. The voice of God. Do you value his voice? While I'm speaking to you, while we just talked for the last couple of weeks, while we're talking today, do, is there something in you like, yeah, I would like to hear his voice. And then you have to ask the question, how much time do you give to learning to hear his voice or listening to him? How much time do you adjust yourself to tune in to his frequency? Because he's speaking. He wants to. And we can hear you know, Holly was talking a little bit earlier uh, about something with hearing God's voice. And she said she recognized my voice on the phone. And I remembered we'd been dating for like a year. I think we were even engaged by then. But, but every time I'd call, I'd go, hi, this is Philip. And she'd like, you don't have to say it's Philip. I know you, <laughs> okay? I got your voice. I've, I've tuned into your frequency. I, I hear you. But um, we have to turn to God's main frequencies, all right, and let me tell you what that is. One of them, the main one is his written word. And the second is his Holy Spirit speaking to our spirit. So Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says this. For the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. And it penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit. So we're asking, is this my emotions? Is this me making this up? Or is this the Spirit of God speaking to me? Because the voice speaks into the same area in our heart. So is it my, my mind, my thoughts, or is it his? But it says the Word of God helps us divide between soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Look, at the Word of God judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And it gives us a guide. It gives us a governor over our emotions, our thoughts, and our attitudes. And many of the most important things that God has spoken to me have not come simply from a voice I've heard, but from his word speaking to my soul. 
He just told me, I knew what I should do because of what was written, because the word of God is alive. Thinking, what should I do? And a scripture comes up that I know applies to this situation. Many times I act and I've gotten no quiver in my liver. I've gotten no motion in my ocean. I don't know what that means. It just sounds like it's another thing that rhymes. That's why I don't do spoken word. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's just like, okay, this is the thing to do. And I, I know it because it's the word of God. The emotions often come later. Yay, look what you did. You know, this is great. God's working. You see things changing. You see, uh, you start to hear his voice more clearly. And the word of God is the first thing. And the second thing is um, by the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 2, 11 says, No one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So when you put your faith in Jesus, he comes to live inside of us by the Holy Spirit and so the Spirit of God speaks to our spirit. So we listen in our heart. So we're preparing ourselves. We're tuning into his frequency by reading his word, by uh, yielding to the spirit. And I, I mentioned once before in one of our messages here that sometimes we're listening out here for a voice, but he speaks into our spirit on the inside. So that way there's no interference in that frequency outside because it comes straight into our heart and um, so then we have that responsibility to prepare ourselves to hear you know it might involve just quieting getting quiet for a little bit taking that time to to be quiet um, and uh, spending some time reading his word this is very practical but very powerful uh, oftentimes I'll put a worship song on and it's, I'm not talking about putting on worship music while you do something else, but putting on a song and, and singing with it or just listening to it, but just really plugging into the moment. And it prepares you and it prepares an atmosphere for God to speak. And it allows our, our heart to hear. And, um, you know, a lot of times uh, what we hear has a lot to do with what's going on inside of us. And so, you know, Jesus once said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we can misinterpret what God is saying because we're so stressed or we're so frustrated or we're angry. So we want to get ourselves into the right frequency so that we're being able to hear him more clearly. And then it leads us to a thing where we have to take time to interpret and confirm the, the voice that, that is speaking to you. And um, so whether it is a written scripture that you have to interpret or something that you feel is being spoken into your heart or even someone gives you a prophecy or some, a prophetic word, then you take the time to figure out what it means and just what that, what that voice is all about. And... You know, God speaks to us in a number of ways. Let me just give you an example. God speaks to us through creation, through the things that he has created. But listen carefully. God uses creation to speak to us, but not to guide us. The creation declares that God is and that God is awesome and, and just greater than anything that we could be facing. And so sometimes people misunderstand, and so they look for guidance in the stars. Or they look for uh, something in the things that God has created. But if you look at um, a couple of scriptures, Psalm, uh, see, the first one is Romans 20. It says, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. And so it's saying that God has put something on the inside of us that when we see creation, we know in our heart that there's something greater than what's created, and that's God. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but maybe you like the outdoors. Maybe you go to the mountains or you go to a lake that you like or, a, or the ocean and just the creation itself, you just are 
so inspired by the beauty or the magnitude of it. Maybe you've been to the Griffith Observatory or you've seen photos that are of these, you know, dynamic pictures of planets and, and the massive uh, expansion of our universe. And you go, wow, isn't God amazing? And it's there to declare. And, and it, you know, sometimes people um, try to sell us on this idea that all of this stuff came about on its own. And God says, no, it's in people to recognize that when they see it. It takes more faith to believe what some people say, how things evolved on their own, than it does that God did it, you know. But sometimes you just look and see, look how amazing and how beautiful. This reminds me that God is bigger than my fears. He's bigger than my battles. He's bigger than my insecurities. Some people get stuck. They, some groups of people, maybe they see the sun and they start worshiping the sun. Or they look at the stars and they follow the stars. But they know, God has put it in them to know that when you see this, it's evidence of someone greater. And then in Psalm 19:1, it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth and the words to the end of the world. And what does it say? What are they saying in verse 1? It declares the glory of God. All day long, all night long, creation declares the glory of God. And so we tune into his frequency and we recognize, you know, I'm not alone. Even though this world is so massive, the creation is so amazing. God is big enough to love me and care for me. One of the things that I would tell you that's so important as you're um, tuning into this frequency, I'll give you a principle that will help you in many ways as you go through life. And it's a principle seen in the Bible. You'll see it in Deuteronomy. You'll see it in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in the teachings of Jesus. And it's this thing called using the confirmation of two or three witnesses. So if you're going to interpret the voice of God, let it be confirmed by two or three witnesses. And what I mean by witnesses is uh, confirmations of things we're talking about. The word of God, a voice in your heart, asking a leader, somebody who's been further along in faith than you, a pastor, and you're, you're looking for that peace of God. Those things that we use as guidelines that we look for two or three confirming witnesses. And so that way it saves you from having this one scripture and you're going, this is the word for me. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe it needs a little interpretation. Or if somebody, you just say, I, I know that what I've heard in my heart is God's word. I don't want to talk about it. I, I just wonder if it's really God's word, couldn't it stand up to having two or three witnesses? The two or three witnesses principle in the Old Testament, it talks about accusations of a crime that it can't stand without two or three witnesses. And um, in uh, issues with a, a problem with the elders in, in First and Second Timothy, it says, let it be established by two or three witnesses. Or other than that, it's just uh, unfair. And then this scripture says in Second Corinthians 3, 1, every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And so this is a good principle or guideline to have safety and clarity it's because sometimes you will have to fight a fight of faith as you're obeying the voice of God. And you want to have in your own heart and those people around you that confidence that, yeah, we know God has spoken to us and this is what I should be doing. And so that, that's such an important thing. And, and sometimes we're hesitant to, to look to leaders and um, it's a safety for us. If you have leaders in your life that you don't trust, then you've got to get new leaders. Because leaders can't tell you what to do. They, want, they should. A pastoral kind of leader would want to help you discover God's best for you. And so, um, you know, the problem with good advice is that it interferes with our plans a lot of times. So it's hard to hear. 
But then that's why we have leaders and pastors to, to help us. And they're not perfect. I didn't say one. You're looking for two or three confirmations. And you're doing that search. You see, Proverbs 15, 22 says, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. So in closing, I want to tell you the third thing in hearing his voice is to accept it Accept and act on his voice. It's called obey. Obey what you know. Start today responding as you hear the gentle whispers of God. Start today responding to what you read in the scripture. Will you be honest to say, well, I know that God wants me to do certain things, but I just have put it off. I've, you know, I haven't paid much attention because I know if I did pay attention to it, I should feel like I have to do it or I've been afraid or I've, I've taken a step like this before and got wounded. Are you willing to trust the Lord and begin to accept it and act on it? It tells us in James, it says that um, when you uh, hear the word of God and you read the word of God, he said to, you'll be blessed if you do them. It doesn't say you'll be blessed if you read them. And that's how we act sometimes. We, re, we, we believe we're going to be blessed if we just read them. And there is a blessing to that. But it, it could be kind of like sitting down in front of the TV watching, a, a, you know, a recording of somebody teaching about diet and health and nutrition. And you're, you know, washing down a bag of potato chips with a frappuccino with extra whip. And you're going, gee, this is a great thing about losing weight and how you eat. And I think somebody, you know, I'm going to write this down. It's so good. I might have to watch it again. Let me get another Frappuccino while I'm waiting. It's just, you know, we're, we're being told to love or being told to forgive or being told to serve. And we're just like watching and underlining, making notes, but not doing except and act on it because you get more aware of how significant his voice is. I want to take a minute and pray for all of us that will have ears to hear what God wants to say in our life. And then what we're going to do is we'll, we'll be closing in just a few minutes with a song of worship. And I really believe that's a time that we take here after we've heard the word to ask the Holy Spirit to really clarify and strengthen what we've heard today in our soul make it personal so God I thank you for um, speak that you speak to us today and I pray that you speak to us through some of the scriptures we've read through the Holy Spirit and this message and we say Lord give us ears to hear and we will tune to your frequency we will accept and act on your word and Lord, we apologize where we've resisted and ignored. We really do want to hear your voice. And we're determined to trust you with all of our heart. Every area of our life, we invite you to speak, to guide us. Give us that heart that's so receptive to you so able to hear from heaven. Help us to hear so well that we'll be one of those people that others will come to and say, what do you think about this word I'm hearing? Because they know we hear and act.